a trip to Hillsborough close but no cigar. Welcome to the Blue Monday podcast. <laughs> Along to the show. Um, bear with us today. It's going to be an interesting technical um, uh, extravaganza, I think, with my daughter daring to try and sleep in the office upstairs. So I've been moved outside and I'm on my laptop. But hopefully, Seb Brown, you can hear me loudly and clearly. Hello, mate. Yep, you're coming across fine. Bit dodgy on the video, but I can hear you no problem whatsoever. I've always sounded better than I've looked, Dave. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I can hear you loud and clear as well. What was the thinking with the Hoover there for those people watching on YouTube? Just thought I'd get rid of it. I think I was <laughs> Sunday evening, Sunday evening, probably time Teresa Hoovered up the hall or something. <laughs> he tries to get us cancelled every week, Seb. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no not, further not, comment. He's on his own there. I take that back. Obviously, <laughs> unbelievable scenes. Um, he, did, Dave, he did actually say that. Go on, Dave. You were there yesterday. We're going to get into points gained and points dropped and where where we're at but just give me your quick um your quick feeling post game before we get into it yeah just uh, overall disappointment it's, as, as you've heard many people say and I think McKenna's alluded to it himself that you know, the old adage yeah before the game you'd have taken a point from there that is quite intimidating as we'll get on to very intimidating as, as we'll get on to um yeah, just 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 a little bit disappointing. You know, you know my adage: when you're two 0 up, get control of the ball. Just keep just not get control of the ball. Just keep it away from your goal for for five minutes. You know, which which we could have done. We didn't let them back in it. And yeah, no surprise to me that uh, when to be fair, we invited it on. So no surprise to me that they scored. And overall, yeah, I, I, probably a draw was a fair result overall. Seb, I think um, context is king is going to be one of the key themes of tonight. And basically, as Dave has just alluded to, if you removed the times of the goals off any bit of analysis, this is a good result. But write the times of the goals back in and the order that they're scored in and everything changes, doesn't it? Yeah, very much so. You know, me and Rich discussed on Friday night and we both said we'd take a point before, you know, we, we wouldn't, to quote Mr. McCarthy, we wouldn't even bother of getting on the bus. But the way the game played out, like Dave's just said, you know, we did the hard work, got ourselves in such a commanding position. And then walking away from it, it kind of felt like a bit like a defeat. I had to remind myself a couple of times we'd actually walked away with a point. And then, you know, you, you have a drive home and you reflect and you think, yes, but we are still, you know, we're top of the league still. We're still unbeaten. It's probably our hardest away game. Maybe that and Fratton Park, our hardest away game of the season. And we've given them a lesson. We've walked away unscathed. So lots and lots of positives. But like Dave said, the overall feeling at the time was very much disappointment leaving the ground. I'm so pleased Seb said that, Dave. And now you've ticked off the away game. You've not lost. And Sheffield Wednesday still have to come to Portman Road in the remaining part of this season. Yeah, I think that's what Ashton... Ashton said on um, on the EFL show exactly the same thing, didn't he? You know, the, the big thing there is, you know, it's a point game, for, you know, by Ipswich, uh, you know, away at Chef Wed. Um, yeah, you're disappointed if you you're disappointed if you if you drop points at home to the teams around you. Um, <laughs> we wouldn't have even thought about saying that in recent seasons, but yeah, you are. So no, it was uh, overall it was a point game, but yeah, the the circumstances were um, as you said um, rearranged the goals, and yeah, it's a great point, but. Yeah, slight disappointment. Well, we will get into all of that. We are live right now again. Apologies for my picture. I'm on the laptop having been kicked out of my office. We will um we will fix this up for future weeks on a on a Sunday night with my um parenting issues at the moment. But um thank you everybody for joining us live on YouTube. We will go to the questions segment. Keep your comments coming in, uh, your reactions to what we're saying. But if you want to ask actual questions for Dave or Seb, that will come after we've done the League One Roundup, which will come after we've spoken in detail about this game. And really big sense now, Seb, that um, from the outside, we don't see it as Ipswich fans, but I know Pompey have come into the conversation that these are the two um, 
big hitters in the league. That's the way it's seen from from the outside. I know we'll get um, oh, arrogant old Ipswich fans again um, on the YouTube comments, but it is the way it's perceived. I speak to a lot of um, a lot of football fans. Of course, um, you know, full credit to um, Pompey who have started amazingly as well. But um, let me bang through um, this Sheffield Wednesday team. And by the way, we'll get into the analysis. It was also second against third in League One. So just a huge day yesterday with Pompey and Plymouth playing as well. But these names and the depth of this Sheffield Wednesday squad is so impressive, isn't it? Stockdale in goal. I offer the heck were Reese James, not that one. Uh, Johnson and Palmer, the wing backs. Bannon, Byers, Deli Bashiru, Windass and Smith. It's strong, isn't it, Sev? It's so strong. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you reeling off the names there puts it in perspective. You know, we've had a, a series of away games this year where we've been to stands with no roof on and stuff. And yesterday was just completely <laughs> different. You know, Hillsborough was uh, was was rocking when they got the couple of goals. It was an intimidating atmosphere. And some of the names you just read off, you know, when you look at that that lineup before the game, you think, OK, this is where we have to really start to earn our money now. We've we faced a few teams this year. Bolton, I guess, are the are the ones we've faced so far. The, the real kind of challenge, maybe Barnsley as well. But this is where it starts to get real. And when you saw their lineup you thought okay yeah this is going to be a a, a tough day on paper given the, the quality they've got in that lineup Dave I always used to tell you off uh, testing strength of a squad by the bench but I'm going to do it myself now so you can um, you can call me a hypocrite not for the first time in my life but look back in some Volks Gregory who I think scored the thick end of 20 goals last season Wilkes who got promoted with Hull Patterson who's a nuisance wherever he plays and Mighton on loan for Forest as well. Does it have the feel, Dave, that these are the two strongest, not necessarily first 11s, because we know Pompey and maybe Plymouth in terms of attacking options and that first 11, um, but these two feel like the two strongest squads in the league, don't they? Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, when you look at when you look at the squads, definitely. Yeah, without 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 any doubt, I don't think a lot of experience there. Um, yeah, fair bit of money spent as well, but uh, yeah, certainly condone that. Um, let's have a look at the um, town squad or town side. And it does really feel, Dave, like there's almost a home 11 and a difficult away match 11 uh, um, that we saw perhaps at Accrington as well. Walton in goal, Danassian, Wolfenstein, Edmondson, Davis and Burns, Evans and Morsey. That's all fairly standard. And then uh, Chaplin, John Jules and Jackson. What is the thinking behind this home and away 11 and what why why the runners dave yeah definitely a tactic you could see from the off and certainly jackson primarily jackson up against i offer from the off was um was just pretty pretty obvious just to to really get them running just to really stretch them i think and it, and it really worked i mean i've never seen walton kick the ball so much for, for probably since he's been at the club um you know we did we did go long we did I say go long we did you know play to that play down the channels play down the channels quite a lot and it was pretty effective we were picking up second ball it was yeah well, I think it was a it was working really well you could see what it was all about a bit similar to I guess a bit to the MK game when um when Jackson came in last year and he was yeah he was really effective at it uh what's your take on that Seb very much so. Yeah, it became clear straight from the kickoff. Jackson was in that wide left position. And I think even before he scored, he had one run at Iorfa and got past him. And you kind of felt, OK, that's clearly an avenue they're going to look to look to exploit. I guess John Jules was a surprise. When I saw the lineup, I assumed it would be Jackson up top and John Jules in one of the number 10 roles. And and, and I was a bit surprised that Dapo didn't start given his strength and given Wednesday's big back line. But, you know, Kieran McKenna got the, the tactics spot on in that in that first half. You know, the, the game plan was clear to try and avoid the middle of the park. I thought we had big switches out to to Burns on the wing. I guess we tried to avoid the middle to nullify Bannon a little bit, and we were getting joy down the flanks. And that was the the clear game plan, and it it worked really well in that first half. Dave, you were at the game yesterday. Paint before we get to the first goal, which was very early. Um, paint the picture for us. Yeah, it was nice. Nice, you know, nice atmosphere. Obviously, pre pre match, there was the whole. Um, um, you know, national anthem and silence impeccably. I've got to say, impeccably observed. So that was all, all, all great, all lovely. Um, although I think the uh, the singer got the singer got still got the words wrong to the national anthem, but I think we'll, we'll allow that again. Didn't quite three study, of them, Dave. Didn't quite well. Yeah, you couldn't quite manage. They had one job to do, and he couldn't quite manage that, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, but yeah. Um, and I mean, right from the kickoff, um, pretty much from the kickoff, you could see Bannon's class really. <laughs> 
Um, a missed kick, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, a missed kick from Walton. Probably the only pass he, 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 I say, he kicked the ball a lot yesterday, and probably the only pass that went astray from him yesterday that wasn't pinpoint. Um, who did he pick out? Ban, and then yeah, just tremendous, tremendous effort, awareness, you know, one touch, swivel, volley, and um, yeah, any other day that ball goes in, that ball, you know, just doesn't bounce gonna... and it goes in. I, I don't Dave, think Walton gonna... would have got there. I really don't I was... think he'd have got there. I was going to say that, Dave. Empty training pitch, no stadium. Throw him 10 balls. I think he scores nine of those, doesn't he? You're probably right. Yeah, I mean, you're probably right. I mean, he got it right. He did come on. I mean, OK, I suppose you kick a bit harder another yard. The ball bounces in the you know, in the roof of the net. But, yeah, it wasn't necessarily off target wide of the goal. It was great execution. Just, you know, just bounce, a bit unluckily bounced over. I don't think, do you, Sam? I don't think Walton would have got there. I don't he think so. No. He was yeah, struggling. He was struggling. I think so. When, when I saw it fall to Bannon, I think we all kind of thought the same thing and it looked for all the world like it was going to drop in and thankfully that bounce saved us. And obviously, Walton kind of beat himself up about it straight away when it bounces over the bar. And I think that told me he, he wouldn't have got back for it. We just got lucky with that no, one, I think. No, we did. We did get lucky. That was that was first minute, I think, certainly. Yeah, really early in the game. And then, yeah, as, as, as Seb said, Jackson had already had one run at Iorfa. And I, really, I think I'd describe Iorfa's performance yesterday as hapless I'd, I guess you could, <laughs> could describe it really he had an absolute shocker but that man and a lot of that I think is down to Jackson I thought played really played him really well and then um, um but yes yeah, almost out of the out of the blue really just in case people are finding this um in any way repetitive because obviously we've come up against Bannon a few times and picked him out a few times I've just got the league one stats up Chances created, Bannon top in the whole division. Expected assists per 90, Bannon top in the whole division. Um, expected assists total, Bannon top in the whole division. It's not easy, lazy analysis, Seb. He always tops these rankings, doesn't he? He's, he's just too good for the league, isn't he? He's a lovely, classy player, lovely left foot. When you see him on the ball, you know, he, he pops up absolutely everywhere and really looks to dictate play. And yeah, he's, he's, he's a lovely player. They did really well to retain him in the summer. I guess he's getting on. That's potentially why he's not kind of, you know, back in the championship. But he's too good for this league. And, he you know, he dictated things yesterday. And, and he's always going to be top of all the, all the stats because he's just got that much quality. He got two assists for them in the previous game. So he came into this game on a real good run of form. I think he had like 150 odd touches against Morecambe on Tuesday night so he really warmed up nicely for it and yeah you can you can try and deal with him you can put a man on him but he's so clever he'll find space you know he'll drag people out of position as we'll come on to with their equalizing goal and he's just a, a really clever classy classy player he's a lovely player to watch I think he summed it up there the word clever he's a clever little player I mean he's got great technique hasn't he? he's got a velvety left foot super first touch you know small little guy low center of gravity but he's a very very clever player my only criticism of playing him on the day, he got booked reasonably early. Midway through the first half, he got booked for pinging down Morsey. I'd have, I'd have just, I'd have just stuck it, stuck it into him from then on because he, he, he was on a fuse. They were on a fuse then, weren't they? they? Really were on a short fuse. All their players. I mean, I think that probably said was the start of it, wasn't it? I think that was probably the start and the crowd and the crowd really starting to turn. Um, and. Yeah, at that point, I really, yeah, you think, oh, yeah, you know, just stick one on him, get him sent off, because he is fiery. I mean, temp he's, he's temperamental. I mean, all good players are, I guess. But, um, yeah, and it's, you know what? Was he that effective first half? The one little disguise ball. He's got these little touch. He played a lovely ball first half, um, very similar to where we'll get to the to the um, to the fourth goal. A little dis only, only a little five yard ball completely took out, I think, completely took out Davis, and I think could have been. I think it could have been Wolf and, and the, the, you know, the right back just flashed it across the goal. So, he, but what I would say about him yesterday, he set plays were nothing special, were they? Dave, really? I'm going to say that thing I say a lot on the podcast though. You've just described a player who's able to just quickly touch and slip the ball between the lines. It's league one. They're yeah, just yeah. so few, they're just so few and far between. And yeah, you're right. You yeah. know, that those effortless balls just straight touch half turn through you go. Anyway, Enough bigging up um, Sheffield Wednesday players, Seb, because we took the lead on four minutes. Um, a good bit of play, a bit of luck, and then a good bit of play, I think, is my analysis of this one. What say you? Exactly right. Yeah, Edmondson steps forward. He, he, he picks up the ball, doesn't he, in the, in the centre circle, has a little run. He's got three players around him for some weird reason. They don't kind of make any real challenge. I think it's a tackle that 
pings the ball through to Jackson. I've watched it a couple of times. I think it's their player tackle that pings it through to Jackson. He's already got inside of Iorfa. You know, he had Iorfa once already. He's got inside of him. Lovely finish, you know, low, opens himself up and just slots into the bottom corner. And we all go absolutely crazy, you know, kind of a bit of a goal out of nothing. We saw Edmondson at Hillsborough last year do a, a run like that. And that's what I like when he's in the side. You know, you've got that option to uh, to move with the ball up the pitch. And yeah, uh, like you said, a bit of quality, a bit of luck and a bit of quality. And yeah, we all go absolutely crazy. And I think they were a little bit shell-shocked because, you know, the fans straight away kind of went very, very quiet. And it was the the absolute perfect start. Great. Um, I, I wonder whether that was off the cuff, Dave, or whether he'd been told they're not going to press you because they clearly sat in shape and they've been told don't engage run through the gap away you go yeah possibly he was looking to pass i mean he, i mean it seemed that he had the ball he's had, had the ball sort of turn it and he sort of looked right and he looked left there was nothing on so and i think it was smith and um smith and um um delhi delhi Pichero just didn't just just opened up and didn't 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 really engage him at all so he sort of sort of sprinted through those with the ball then then i think seb's right got about i suppose what's it for 40 30 yards out someone slides in and places a ball really confident seb said really confident finish from jackson you know first time opened himself up flashed it in the corner but yeah it was yeah it was one of those ones where yeah the, the opportunity was there and he yeah obviously he's been encouraged to do that and did it very well What's the rhythm of the game from here on then, Dave, um, from four minutes on? Um, yeah, it settles down, doesn't it, really, um, Seb? Yeah, I mean, I think I think they, they're in descendancy. I mean, I think they had perhaps, I'd like to say, in first half, they certainly had more possession than us, and the ball did flash across our For, box. 49-51 of... in our favour, Dave, strangely. Was it really? OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah all right. Half. Yeah. And the ball sort of flashed across our six-yard box a couple of times. Yeah. Um, can't remember us really creating too much. We were just keeping them at arm's length pretty well. I thought Morsey had a volley towards the end of the half, which probably looked, yeah, a bit sort of dipping wide, probably well wide. But yeah, other than that, it's all fairly, fairly even, really. We sort of saw it out well, didn't we, Seb, really? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we, they were building in the ascendancy a little bit and Danassian went down, didn't he? I thought he had like a muscle strain and that kind of mm. really took the the sting out of the game for the remainder of mm. the half. I thought both sides, I don't know if you agree, Dave, I thought we were both a little bit sloppy. They had a few times, you know, they passed the ball straight oh. out of play and Evans gave the ball away more probably in that half. I think somebody said it in the Telegram group, more in that half than he has all season. It, it wasn't a, a, a classic, I don't think. It was kind of maybe two sort of nervous sides. You know, the crowd were getting edgy with them. There were a few booze and stuff at certain officials' decisions. Um, but it, it wasn't a classic. I, I can't remember much of note at all after Dan Danassian kind of went down and, and, and took a bit of sting out of the game. And it was, like Dave said, we kept them at arm's length. But it it was a little bit sloppy, I thought, from both sides. Yeah, there, there were. And I'd say, you know, the, the chances they did create were a result of us giving away, giving the ball away in fairly... <laughs> fairly sort of deep areas as well as we do because we you know we look to play through the lines and stuff but yeah i think you're right i thought evans overall had a half decent game but yeah he did because he's, he's reached such a level so far this season particularly the other night um yeah he was sort of guilty of I and mean, again wolf and then gave the ball away a couple of times but um yeah other than that we, it was it was fairly even steven really dave this tension in the stadium you're talking about is this starting to percolate yet inside the first half yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, um, I'm a ref already. Lines were called a ref. We already had something thrown at him. Um, what, midway through the half, wasn't it, Seb? Probably just, be, I guess, before Denassian got injured, I think. So, yeah, it was simmering, yeah. And then, of course, every, um, you know, every time every time there was a fairly contentious one that went our way, they were given the linesman and the ref absolute powers, <laughs> weren't they? Yeah, and, and, and you know, as the game plays out, particularly, well, we'll get to it with the last goal, but, yeah, that I think that certainly had some influence on it. Um, Seb, do you want to take us into the um, second half and sort of towards us going 2 0 up? Yeah, so, you know, I, I thought we started the second half pretty strongly. I mean, Evans had a deflected effort through and, you know, John Jules, if he's slightly more experienced, might be following that in a little bit more. Um, but we, we kind of grew in the ascendancy a little bit, I thought. And then we get lucky, you know, I thought it was a, uh, a well, it was, it was a foul the ref kind of gave and gave an advantage to play on. But there was no advantage at all. And the ball ends up with, with Ladapo who kind of finds Jackson. Jackson overhits his cross and it finds Harness still in the area. He plays it out wide to Burns. Burns kind of takes a touch, looks up, 
puts a ball in that hits the, the kind of far post low and Jackson is there to put Iorfa under pressure and it hits Iorfa's shin and bounces in the goal. And again, we all go absolutely crazy. You know, we'd started that that half pretty well. And, and at that point, you know, a couple of their players kind of sink to their knees on the ground. And, you know, we're, we're kind of thinking, wow, this is this is absolutely superb. And there that you're kind of thinking maybe their heads are going to go a little bit because we, we had started that half well. And it was the, what, 71st minute? I think at that point I was kind of thinking, okay, well, we'll just be professional now. We might see a couple of tactical subs. We'll keep the ball. We'll see the game out. And uh, and it's a, an amazing three points on the road. So, yeah, good good play from Burns with the ball in. Good pressure from Jackson again to put pressure on Iorfa to force him to make the mistake. And um, I'm not sure we deserve to be 2-0 up because, they, like I said, there wasn't that much in the game. But, but you know, certainly a good passage of play. And we did get lucky with the, the ref giving the, the advantage for the foul that wasn't really an advantage at all. Dave? Yeah, I mean, I think Jackson, he's doing a bit of, he overhit the cross. I think that Jackson, it's a really good cross, left foot as well. Left, he sort of drifts it in left foot, just beyond the far post. Um, yeah, there wasn't really anyone to take advantage, but he puts it in a decent area. And I think the, the fullback just doesn't clear it. He sort of gets underneath it, heads it out. Yeah, and as Seb described it from there, good from good from Burns, puts a cross in with pace. And I said, I all through had a shocker. So sort of about summed it day um, so much that he was hooked straight away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Seb's right. Two nil. Think. Okay. Two nil. Right. Let's see this out. But and and then, but then the issue. Then the issue. The game stops for after we score for what two or three minutes there. Yeah, because the more stuff is thrown, isn't it? The linesman and the ref goes and talks to Darren Moore and Kieran McKenna. They said in the match report, they put I couldn't hear it. They said they put an announcement out over the tannoy I, I to didn't say hear it. if if things are still thrown, you know, the game will be will be abandoned. And 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 but that was a yeah, that was a break in the in the play. And unfortunately, within a few minutes of the restart, they get a they get themselves back in it, don't they, with a free kick? I, I just think that gets them up. That gets them up. So, you know, they're two nil down, they're on their knees and that almost gives them a lift because you know, the crowd are going absolutely balmy, uh, you know, at this point. And um, it's just uh, it's just a hobby horse of mine. Um, Harness makes initially Harness makes a really good challenge, doesn't he? And wins the ball, wins the ball cleanly. You think brilliant. Burns in possession. Just get it out of your feet. Knock it down the line. Just knock it long. Been doing that all day. Knock it. And he tries to be a bit cute and he loses possession in needless foul. And, and like I said, you know, the free kick, Bannon's free kicks have been poor all day from wide, you know, over here, Walton had caught them and picked anyone out really. And uh, it's a smart bit of play, isn't it? You know, he runs, shapes it to take it, knocks it back. Got to say, superb ball from Johnson. First time sort of swept him back post. And kind of Ladapo lets Byers run off him. Can he blame Ladapo? They seem, he almost had two men seemingly, but Byers runs off him and yeah, no chance. He's got on an angle about five yards out good finish half volley first time but point blank and yeah they're back in it you know to you know the crowd by then are going absolutely crazy so you think oh, okay and then a strange for me a strange substitution well we'll get to that um seb i just want to um you know we, we we try and offer our telegram group up as a a great place to debate because i've seen um again twitter being ridiculous and it's not for us to <laughs> teach people to how to have a sensible conversation but i will preface this by saying um if you criticize um freddie ladapo that may not be unfair criticism and that's not um you're, you're not saying he's a terrible, awful person and he's the worst player in the world. There's a place for reasoned um, criticism. Um, and then we seem to be getting the um, the kind of then polar opposite on, on the other end. That um, uh, It gets very silly very quickly. Um, he does clearly get um, buyer's remorse, doesn't he, um, at the back stick there? Yeah, buys just you know he gets it, it's a lovely piece of play. It's a really well worked free kick. I, I spoke to a couple of Wednesday ground f- fans as we walked back from the ground, and they said all season they've not tried anything like that. It's the first time they've seen any, any kind of free kick routine off the off the training pitch, which I thought was sod's law. Yeah, he loses his man and buys gets in there, but I felt a bit sorry for Ladapo to be honest because when he came on, we seemed to drop so deep. He was almost having to press five people at once and I kind of felt he got a little bit of a bit of a raw deal you know he comes on I, I can't remember what minute he came on but f- from the moment he came on we noticed that we dropped deeper and suddenly he's got to look after a load of bodies and I just felt like he got a bit of a raw deal I've seen the comments on online and stuff you know saying he's useless and he's rubbish etc no. I don't think he's in the slightest I just think he got a little bit of a raw deal and you know trying to close down that many people he had to pick his battles and pick where he was gonna you know form the press and it, it just didn't work and we sat deeper and deeper and invited pressure on ourselves and I think you could sometimes he's got a 
put your hand up to the quality of the ball in. It was a great ball in, you know, with pace, a difficult skill, you know, he swept it in with pace. It was a great ball in. Um, yeah, you could say, oh, he's lost his man there, but no, it was, it, look, it was a really well worked free kick. Yeah, Dave, you'd be you'd be yelling at him if you were in that box. You know you would. Well, of course you would. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you say, Dave, a strange substitution. Well, I thought so. I, don't, I mean, I don't know what Seb says. Um, Seb thought, but yeah, Jackson, who all right, 80, 81st minute by that time, John Jules had come on. I think he'd made all these preps for John. Um, John Jules had come on. Um, had gone off. The Dapo had come on. Chaplin, Chaplin had gone off for Harness. So perhaps he'd made his front front subsid front two substitutions. Personally, I would have kept. I think I'd have kept Jackson on, and I might have pitched ball in somewhere in midfield and try and sort it from there. I think, but. Yeah, you could, I mean, you could see, you know, sending a message out. Jackson, Jackson pulled off, and Keo thrown in. You think, okay, it's, it's, it's going to be like the Alamo, and, and that's why he's thrown him on. You know, thrown him in, and also a bit of experience, I suppose. But I, I really don't think that was that. That really was the, the right move. I, I didn't think so because it just invited invited them on, and yeah, um, in the end, pressure. So we'd be very hardly ever, hardly barely got out of our half after then, did we, say? No, I, I agree. I, I think. The, the bringing on of Keo meant we had, I think, three players out of position. You know, Wolfram yeah. didn't go to the right centre-back position. Danassian then moves to the right wing-back role, across. which he's not. And Burns is the one to go up front. And I guess yeah. kind of replaced Jackson's pace as an outlet. But, you know, it was noticeable when Keo came on giving instructions that at least two or three of them didn't really right. know where they were going to go. And, and losing that outlet of Jackson's pace was was crucial. You know, I can understand wanting to get Keo on because you're facing the Alamo, but in hindsight, maybe you do take off an Edmondson just to see the game out and retain the shape that everyone's familiar with. Or like like Dave says, you know, you bring Don Ball on and stick three in midfield, Morsey yeah. Evans and Ball, retain Close possession, stick Close somebody on Bannon and, and, and see the last few minutes of the game out. But yeah, yeah the, the, it was a strange sub because it meant we had three players in unfamiliar positions um, and it was a clear intention that we were just going to sit deep and try and absorb things. And unfortunately, we didn't ride it out, did we? Yeah, and you could see that there was no real I say, no game because of the game plan. But as Keo came on, he was shouting instructions across, and Danassian was almost, well, yeah, really? You know, yeah. It was, yeah, and, and, and of one. But it's probably the first yeah, we're game top, season, we're, isn't we're top it? Of the top of the league with 21 <laughs> points. We'll yeah. get to that. Yeah. Hey, it's you know. Cool. It's probably the first game of the season, is it, where the subs have, haven't improved us. About know, a negative, so, yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, we've, we've seen so many times subs yeah. coming on, the finishes, as we've called, and they've made telling contributions. But, but yeah, I think losing Jackson um, and, 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 and nothing against Keo, but, you know, just losing the outlet of pace meant that those subs kind of invited pressure. I didn't think Harness was amazing when he came on. I thought he was a bit lucky, actually, to stay on the pitch because he gets himself booked and must have given away three free kicks after that. Yeah. Um, and I thought he was a little bit lucky to stay on the pitch. And, you know, it's it, it's one of those, like you say, we are top of the league on 21 points. We should all be really, really happy. Um, it was just one where perhaps the subs were the wrong call. Um, let's get into this last goal then, because um, were this goal on side, it's actually a pretty nice goal, isn't it, Dave? But um, just... look, and let's let's try and be sensible about this. I have not seen an angle taken no, on no, the side we, of the pitch. No, no. I, I, look, I look at it once, and I'm sure if you ask 100 football fans to look at it once in real time from the hard cam in the um, in the main stand, it looks offside. We we get that. But I'll also say, um, I think VAR has taught us, you sometimes look at these things and you think that's, that's miles off or that's miles on. And, you know, they draw the yeah. lines. And, Someone's toenail is on or off. So I think the best we can do is say it looks offside, Dave. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, it's some interplay between Johnson, Johnson and um, Johnson and James. And we look knackered in midfield. We by the do, way, but there, it's a lovely, it's, a, it's a, such a great bit. It's such a great touch from Bannon. It's sublime, isn't it? It was very similar to the one I said in the first half, but on the right side. But it's a lovely touch. I mean, he just, just nicks it between Wolfenden and Wolfenden and Evans. And fair play to James. It's an, it's an absolute quality ball. I mean, OK, you fairly simple ball. But at that stage, you know, you perhaps you see it at that stage, you know, you know, the game on the line over here, you know, hit behind it. But it's a perfect ball in bisects everyone. And yeah, it looks like Smith's on side. But maybe maybe one of the wide men closest to James keeps him on. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's a it's a signal, but the touch the touch from I know we've said about it before. The touch from Bannon is just sublime, really. <laughs> That's brilliant. And um, yeah, uh, you know, on the face of it, a good goal. But Ben, you're right. We looked out on our feet, and 
yeah, you, you think, oh, it, well, who knows? You know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but ball comes on. Maybe Bannon doesn't receive that ball there, but there you go. Seb? Yeah, very much so. Is you know, it's a moment of quality from Bannon. He plays a lovely yeah. ball inside the channel. He finds that space. The touch takes him away from the man. The ball in, and yeah, by all angles, it does look offside. Interestingly, I didn't notice any of our and on the on the replay highlights. No. None of our players appeal it. So Walton it must have did. Been pretty tight. Yeah, sorry, Walton did, but none of the centre backs appeal it. So it no. must have been pretty tight on the pitch. You know, it's it's one of those. You know, at, at that point, like you said, we looked absolutely dead on our feet across the whole but, team. You know, we looked knackered. I guess obviously this is a big step up compared to what we've played previously. In other games, we've seen our fitness, you know, come to the fore at latter parts of the game. But because we're playing against a side that's probably the equal of us, you know, the, the, it was noticeable that we were absolutely knackered. And then the board goes up saying six minutes. And at that point, I think there was only going to be one winner. Don't you agree, Dave? <laughs> yeah, there was a, there was almost a shout for a penalty. I think I was obviously up the other end so other than that. But I mean, just getting back to the goal and the crowd's influence, I mean... Look, if, if if that decision clearly was a marginal one, there was no way the linesman was going to put his flag up. No <laughs> way. No chance. No chance in hell. I mean, they're just going to uh, riot, Seb, wouldn't it? Invade. Yeah, I think they've been a pitch invasion. I honestly yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was really tense. They really were. And they really did, certainly, I thought, second half. And that really worked for them. You know, and look, it's a home crowd, the vociferous crowd. You know, we say the atmosphere is at Portman Road, but... Yeah, I think that was intimidating for the for the officials, and yeah, there was no way he was going to disallow that. No way, no chance on earth. And yeah, and you look, you, and you do come away as a kick in the is a kick in the proverbials. But as Seb said, with six minutes to go, you think, Christ, the point is going to be a good result now. Yeah, take <laughs> let's the get point. out yeah, of town. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we'll just get into our final analysis. Um, our good friend David has uh, come up trumps again. Bless him. Thank you so much, David. You, 10 David. euros on the um, super chat. Very, very kind. David Top is man. very much Top, man. I think um, also part of our community David on Selly's, Telegram. He's hoping to come over before the end of the season as well, I think, isn't he, Seb? Yeah, he was saying, yeah, he said he's, the other night. bring his son as well. So hopefully oh. we'll get to see him in the ground at some point. Uh, that'd be awesome. Brilliant stuff. Thank you, um, David. So, yeah, look, we will obviously try on the podcast to take a potentially tight possible offside call in with, with the class that we feel that um, that we that, that we should. Yeah. Um, but again, um, Seb, I'll, I'll go into my um, I'm going to go into my positive, my positivity theory that, as Dave says, we've got a superb points total. We've ticked off Sheffield Wednesday away from home and they would have been very very happy with a point um at minute 71 when they've gone two nil and looking at the numbers uh 53 47 on the possession the xg is in wednesday's favor shot count is completely even again context is king and game state is king and i accept dave's points about backing off and you know when it goes two nil they've got nothing to lose and i i get all of that and that overrides pure numbers but there's a lot to be positive about. And the one thing to be negative about is the order the goals were scored in and the time. Massively so. Like you said at the start of this of, of this show, if you remove the timings of the goals, it's a great away point. We're all happy with it. You offer it to us in the pub at 2.45 and we all absolutely snap your hand off. It's just the way the game played out. But, you know, knowing McKenna as we do now, having had him for nine months in charge, he'll learn from this. You know, previous yeah. managers might not have learned from it. I've, I've got no doubt at all that he'll be looking at all the analysis and he will take stuff away from this game and learn it. And, and I'd be very surprised if we saw a kind of repeat of all the scenarios that happened to result in those those two goals. I've got total faith in the coaching team and in, in, in the an analysis to put it all right. And like Dave said, top of the league, 21 points. You know, Pompey were very lucky with a 94th minute equaliser to stay up there with us yesterday. And, you know, we couldn't have asked for more going into game round nine. You know, we've got these three games, this one, Plymouth next week, and then Pompey. The hardest one probably is now out the way. We're still unbeaten and we go into those two with great confidence, I think. Dave? Yeah, I agree. I mean, what I would say is you spoke about removing, you you remove Bannon from that team and they're a mid-table. He is, they has so much influence on that team. They're a mid-table side, perhaps yeah. just, just nudging yeah. above mid-table. He is that influential. So he is a big, big player. And look, as is Morsey, let's say for us, but even Morsey for us, I, I just don't think he's nowhere near as influential as, as Bannon is, is for them. So he is crucial. Keep him fit and from what I saw of him, um, free of suspension, and yeah, they're, they're going to yeah they're, they're going to be there for the they're going to be there for the long for the long haul, but yeah, take take him out of the take him out of the equation, 
different different scenario completely. Interesting. Uh, Colin in the uh, chat, oh. $19.99 99 on the super sticker. Colin, thank you so, so much. That's thank so, you. so kind. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the podcast. We'll do the, the normal ramble. It'll always be free um, here, but uh, we do have some expenses with all the software and running all the merch store and um, all of the business. So we do thank you so, so much for your um, contributions. Right. We are going to get into questions, uh, but we just bang through the League One action. Um, I'll, I'll go through all the results. And if you just maybe want to pick one out each, just to speak about the um, kind of floated your boat. Um, Accrington back to it at home. They beat Cheltenham 1 0. Bolton won Peterborough 0. Can I push one or other of you towards that one? Because Bolton looked good and Peterborough have lost six on the bounce in all comps. Um, Bristol Rovers three, Lincoln six. Okay. Uh, Cambridge nil, Barnsley three. I think Mike Duff's got that moving in the right direction. That's the Cambridge yeah. perfect home record gone. Derby two, Wickham one. Uh, take out all uh, Dave's comments about Bannon and apply them to Connor Hurahan. And I think that's that one done. Uh, Exeter nil, Burton two. Well done, Burton. They've won finally. Fleetwood one, Charlton one. Fleetwood are better than we thought. Forest Green won Morecambe too. Well done, Morecambe. They've finally won as well. Oxford won MK2. Oxford, um, wow. Uh, Port Vale 2, Shrewsbury 1. Ellis Harrison with two goals in that one. And the other big game at the top of the league was Pompey 2, Plymouth 2. And that one really ebbed and flowed. It looked like Pompey. Then it looked like Plymouth. And then a last-minute equaliser again. Um, Seb, do you want to pick out any of those games again i'd err you towards pompey um uh bolton maybe yeah, derby we'll, we'll do the ones that kind of affect us most i'll do the bolton one yeah late winner wasn't it by uh Affa Lion. big big deflection on it peterborough in an awful awful run of form i think they dropped jack marriott as well from the sounds of it they, bench, bench yeah there. so six on the bounce there you know we've already got is it over 10 points ahead of them? I think now, which, you know, we none of us would have anticipated going into, you know, the the middle of September or so. So they're in an awful run of form. Bolton looked very good. Four on the bounce now. Um, we, we They were one of my favourites, I think, for, for third or fourth in the early season predictions. Looking good. And, um, yeah, the table is kind of starting to, to sort itself out a bit, isn't it? Dave? Yeah, Plymouth. I mean, um, one nil down. You know, crowd certainly up at up at Fratton Park, but you know certainly didn't fold. I think there was a change. Schumacher was a change of formation there, and yeah, they came back and looked looked really good. And as you said, took a 94. There was a, a sending off, wasn't there? Just as they were lining up to take that final free kick, I think there was someone argy bargy in the penalty box. There was a sending off, so they were defending the defending the um defending the free kick with uh with with ten men and uh, yeah, well floated ball in and um. Well, no, it wasn't a free. It was Marlon Pack. I think they were lining up for a Marlon Pack launch, the last, certainly last knock into the game, and he throws it short. And obviously, they're a man short, so no one closing him down. Good ball in, and I think it's at Hackett. Hackett knocks it in at the back post. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess for us that was yeah, as you were before uh, before the start of play. So you'd you'd happily take that. I mean, the only one, yeah, I, I agree with what you said. I mean. Two absolutely magnificent finishes by Connor by Connor Hurahan. And again, I think he's probably yeah, and I wouldn't say not quite as influential in, in you know, given the given the team Sheffield Wednesday, but yeah, he's a very, very big player for big player for Derby. And I heard Dean Ashton talking on well, probably you probably you suggested it. Um yeah. saying that um yeah, he's much more, you know, in, in you know, in League One, he's 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 as much more effective a game for them, playing in a slightly more forward role than perhaps a holding more of a holding midfield no, that role. Was... That that came from him, and I work. was, was all... I was <laughs> nodding along. What did happen that you would have you would have laughed at is um, I get certain alerts that come through before all the screens give the goals, and I said, "Oh, Hurahan scored for Derby. Look over there. You're about to see a left footer um, stroked <laughs> in from the edge of the box." And <laughs> what happens? In goes a left footer from the um, from the edge of the box. But um, Yes, we're going to get on to questions um, imminently. Get your questions in um, right now. But um, I'm just going to do a little bit of pluggery because we are back, Dave. Blue Drum Monday roll. Live. Drum roll. Drum roll, please. Blue Monday Live, part two. Dave, do you remember all the troubles we had finding a venue for Blue Monday edition <laughs> part one? What? <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I did. Yeah, yeah. In the end, it was a super venue. In the end, wasn't it? it turned out. It turned out brilliantly. But turned yeah, there was nice, a lot of. But it did. Richard but there was a lot of, better with this one. Oh, he trumped you. Trumped you. 
Richard has spoken to his best mate, Mark Ashton, Seb, and we are actually going to be... Um, get right your questions the, in. From the home dressing room at Portman Road. Get, get your questions in, guys. Keep them rolling, keep them rolling. Um, we are going to be at Portman Road, which, um, again, Dave and I have a lot of these comments about our silly little podcast and, you know, our ridiculous chats about football being listened to by people. But to have a show inside Portman Road is just absurd beyond belief that they're letting us in. So we thank the club massively and we want you all to come. Um, Rich has given me some words here. Blue Monday Live is back this summer at Portman Road. We're massively grateful to IGFC for hosting us in the Sir Bobby Robson suite after the Cheltenham game. It's a home win, isn't it, Seb? Come on. On Saturday, 12th of November at 8 p.m., doors open at 7.30. So that's after the Cheltenham game. Come and see us in the stadium. We'll discuss the game. Have some fun. Uh, We'll maybe do a giveaway. We'll hopefully have some special guests. I'll say no more. Pop along there too. Um, Whilst we all hope to be there, we regret to say that not all our um, team members will be able to join us. That is a reference to uh, me. But it's going to be an amazing show anyway. Um, Tickets go on sale Tuesday morning. Um, it's going to be 15 quid. It, it doesn't, um, it isn't free for us to go into uh, Portman Road, but we hope you're going to have a great time there. Those people who are in our Telegram group, um, our paid subscribers in Telegram, um, you're going to get discounted entry um, and we're going to give you an early shout for the tickets, I think, as well. So that is Blue Monday Live after the Cheltenham game in the stadium, Seb. You don't have to, well, you're going to have to kind of go out and come round yeah, or come back in again and wait wait for a minute go and get a beer <laughs> elsewhere but uh, are you looking forward to it Seb? Phenomenal cannot wait yep I was at the Curve Bar three years four years ago was it as a, oh, as a yeah. fan so can't wait to be there with everyone it's going to be a brilliant brilliant evening hopefully like you say after a resounding home win hopefully we'll still be up the right end of the table and yeah it'll be a brilliant brilliant night and kudos to Rich for pulling out that negotiation with ITFC because he's played a, a blinder there hasn't he? Yeah yeah he's, yeah he's put a lot of hard work into that did Rich brilliant and Dave, the the team kind of turned up before the last one. We we drew one one against Stoke and who we was Will Keane or something equalised. Late in the last Will Keane was it? I think yeah. a late Will Keane equalised. Yes, yeah, so that sort of set the tone because you don't really want to, you know, it's football. Anything can happen. We don't really want to go into the go into the show on a, on the back of a defeat that that, that afternoon. So um, yeah, that, that all worked. And we had a super time before. So I mean, this at the football ground, as you said, who who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it all those years ago? So absolutely, um, absolutely fantastic. So tickets on sale on Tuesday, and this is after the Cheltenham game, which is November the 12th. So we are really, really made up about this. Right, guys, get your questions in about yesterday um, and about the um, sort of League One uh, shape of things. Um, Let me scroll up a little bit. He says, Nudson with a suicidal back pass, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, God, James McLean scored a ridiculous embarrassing goal in that game didn't he where he pretty much walked into the net but oh he walked um, in didn't he yeah yeah there we go uh right questions 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 uh mullet is he being sensible today he loves to mock me on twitter mullet and i never bite but he's he's being sensible isn't he i'll give him that one um is caden jackson the new janoy danassian in the resurrection stage not bad shout that seb no, it's not. Yeah, uh, very much so. You know, he was completely out of favour. One of the bomb squad, you know, I think we all thought he would move on in the, the summer of 2021, but he, he worked hard, got a couple of Pizza Cup games under Cook, and then McKenna clearly likes him and McKenna clearly, clearly trusts him for these big games. You know, was it MK Don's away, I think, in February or March time was the first time we kind of saw him given that responsibility. And yeah, he, he, he appears to be the go-to guy. I guess he's got what probably only burns in the squad has got of that raw pace, you know, that out and out pace. It's such a useful weapon. Um, but he clearly he clearly trusts him. And yeah, I guess we'll see him in a lot more big games. And it's a hell of a turnaround. He's signed a new contract in the summer and long may it continue. He's, he's, he's playing really, really well at the moment. I get questions in, in the comments. Any burials of either Mikey or Joe will all be read out, by the way. So that's Jules. Yeah. Mikey will be late, bless him. I, I endorse uh, that message. Um, Jules, 100%. he's been... And- he played in a big golf final today. He's, he's yeah, he's busy, mate. He's celebrating. I think they won, so he's celebrating. Woking oh, artisans. Oh, very nice. That's the most on-brand Mikey thing possibly. The artisans, isn't it, dearie <laughs> me? Um, Nick. Now this is a pertinent question, Dave, because we're hearing lots of, lots of whispers about possible players um, being called up mm. next weekend, mm. um, namely the um, Egyptian prince. Um, mm. in the central midfield. How late can they call off Plymouth? Um, 
I'd imagine um, probably two days before, um, but it would be done before then. Um, is there any yeah. chance of this game? Um, it's on Sky TV as well, so the it's TV company is trying it? to. It is, yeah. What, what say you, Dave? I mean, if if you're losing, if you if you're losing Morsey, both Morsey and Burns, yes, we have got a strong squad, but I think I'd be pushing to get that match off. Said, wouldn't you? Definitely, yeah. If yeah. Morsey goes, then no, yeah. don't, don't without play without it. question. You, you can deal without yeah. Burns. You know, Burns. You can you can put both. In I'm saying both KBY, Morsey, but... yeah. But not Burns for me. Uh, not, and Morsey for me. If more if Morsey isn't there, call it off. And also Greg Lee potentially out the squad as well. Yeah, he's away with Jamaica. So yeah. you know, Burns and Lee, we're going to have to accept aren't going to be there. But if if Morsey is gone, then yeah. get it get it called off. Yeah, I agree. I think Morsey's Morsey's the one from what we're hearing. If if he goes, the the three of them. Um, yeah. Well, I think we can live with Burns and Burns and Lee. But yeah, with with Morsey, no, get it off. Um, FPL Tractor. <clears throat> Um, do you think KM will use the Pizza Cup game as a playoff for Kane, Vincent Young and Edwards to replace Burns for Argyle? I mean, that would be a good idea, Seb, but he may not have to on the basis of what you two have just said. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he will. I think we'll see them both play, but I think yeah. like the Northampton games, KVY will play as the right-sided centre-back. I think we'll see all change. It'll be the B team, and Edwards will probably get that right wing-back role. And he deserves it because he got, was it three assists in the Northampton really game? You know, he, yeah, he played really, really well, and he's not had much league game time since then. So he'll be the right wing-back, I would have thought. KVY, the right centre-back, the right of the three centre-backs. And a chance for Edwards, maybe, you know, with, with Burns away with Wales, maybe he can stake a claim if the game is on to start in the right wing-back role against Plymouth on Sunday. Uh, keep the questions coming, guys. We'll do as many as we possibly can, and then we'll have a little look ahead. Um, ben, Egypt squad was announced around an hour ago. No English translation. Oh, this is unfolding as we go. This is oh, this is dear. This is breaking breaking news. Um, uh, Veronica. Plymouth are missing players too, so maybe a good. Well, there you go. Swings and swings and roundabouts. Yeah. Who's got who's got the stronger squad? I know Plymouth have got plenty of options up front, but right the, the way, right. From Villa's the way, isn't he? Is it Azaz? He's Azaz, away, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he's away. So that's a big, big he's loss for them. Decent, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Um, any more for any more in the questions? Oh, um, I don't want to talk about refereeing decisions. That's um, it's a valid question, but um, our, our heads will very, very um quickly explode if we do indeed do that. Um, so Seb, Tuesday night, we've already mentioned this. Um, Pizza Cup. Have I got the right week this week? I always do the wrong week. No, I have got the right week this week. Yeah, it's Arsenal, isn't it? Arsenal, Arsenal. under twenty ones, the ones that put us out Arsenal. last year. So <laughs> Arsenal stick a fifteen year old on today in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, crazy, isn't it? Born in two thousand and seven. <laughs> well, I hope he doesn't feel old. I hope he doesn't play in this game because he's <laughs> probably getting most first teams in League One. But well, a lot of these boys would. Um, what sort of a what sort of a strategy? Um, not, 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 I'm not talking about a tactical strategy, Seb. What sort of a strategy do you use for getting through this game, especially if there's going to be rumblings um, in terms of the Plymouth game? Um, you can probably give me two answers, one for if the Plymouth game goes ahead and one for one for if it doesn't. What, what do you do if you're Kieran McKenna here? I would, I would do the same thing regardless if Plymouth is on or off. I would play the squad players. I'd make it the B team, you know, the likes of Hlaki, KVY, Edwards. Um, you know, you can go through the side and, and pretty much pick our B side, which would probably finish near enough the playoffs in League One anyway. I would take some people out of the firing line. I think we looked noticeably knackered yesterday at full time. So I think a good break for those that are either going to play at Plymouth or a prolonged break um, before, before Pompey wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. And we've got to give some of these guys game time, you know, it's important that we keep the fitness levels up amongst the squad. Hopefully, Ahadme might get his first start and cause a bit of problems up. I don't know if he might be cut. I don't know if he cup tied actually in the in the pizza cup. I don't know if it works. Keep talking, I, and I'll check that. Yeah, I don't know. He, he scored then against Cambridge in the previous rounds for for Burton. So I don't know oh, if cup there, tying yeah. is a thing in the pizza cup. If it isn't, hopefully he'll lead the line and get some minutes into the squad players that have you know featured recently to keep their fitness levels up and to give a few of the guys a bit of a break from from yesterday. Uh, Dave, a few people asking, uh, can John Jules play oh. against Arsenal if it's I, I don't know how that works if it's it's essentially a different team a, isn't it if it's the different under team isn't it although yeah, I don't I don't know yeah. but if anyone knows different the thing. the actual ruling on that 
Yeah, I, I think I agree. I agree wholeheartedly with Seb. I mean, someone like Humphreys, he showed up well in the previous game. If he's fit, I think he's is he fit? I'm, I'm not quite sure, but if he's fit, you'd think he'll he'll get some more game time. So, yeah, I, I don't think I'd do anything. I'd do anything different. There's your answer there. Yeah. Maybe and, and the time we put out should be easily good enough, shouldn't it? To to get a pretty, and I know they beat us a couple of years ago, but we are a completely different entity now. So yeah, the side that. we put out, even the B side, B team, you know, clip this bit before we've lost three 0 uh, <laughs> They should be easily good enough to go out and uh, and beat yeah. Arsenal's children. Should be Arsenal's kindergarten. Should be, yeah. Me. yeah. These kindergarten boys tend to move the ball around quite um quite quite well, quite don't well. They? Um, guys, thank you so, so much. And thank you to everybody in the chat. Apologies. We've had a bit of a um, struggle tech-wise here, but uh, we will endeavour to get that fixed um, for the future. I hope everything's come across lovely and you can hear it nice and loud and clear. Dave, are you wearing your new Blue Monday merchandise there? I am indeed. Yeah, I've got the long sleeve premium grey T-shirt. And oh, you well, look nothing on the back. Just you there. Look there it is. Very, very dashing thanks, in thanks, it, in buddy. it Dave. Yeah. You look yeah, tremendous. No. So yeah, go and, go and Lovely grab some... quality, gotta say. Nice quality. Go and grab some merchandise. And Seb, it's all going off in the Telegram group. Are you enjoying it in there? It's brilliant. Yep. Give it a go. Two week free trial. Then it costs a five or a month. It's great. The the match day chat is absolutely mm-hmm. brilliant, getting everyone's perspectives and everyone's different routines on a match day morning. It's really, really good. Come and give it a try. You won't lose a single thing. It's a nice place where reasoned reason and debate can occur without, you know, <laughs> insults and people being horrible <laughs> like other social media platforms. Give it a go. Nothing to lose. Two week free trial. And um, and the numbers have held really well, haven't they? People that do come do do stick with it. So yes, yeah, come and give us, a, give us a try. Tremendous stuff. Uh, so Dave, final thoughts from you. Um, I watched those Gary Neville interviews where he what does he say? He says something Soccer like box. fate. No, um, Gary, on YouTube. Failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. Yeah, he, oh, says, no, he, no, he no. says yeah, that's it. Failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. Hopefully, um, so much more positive at the moment um, to be to be focusing oh, on. very than, much so. Than yeah, the last look, twenty minutes of, of this yeah, game. Absolutely. That's like, you know, I don't want to even call it a blip, really. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, just one thing, perhaps we should give a shout out. The ladies got a victory, victory today at home. Oh yes, yes. Sorry, I, think, I missed beat, it. Um, Bridgewater United 1-0, I think, sounded like. Um, I mean, it was at Felix, though. I mean, I know it was windy today, so I guess that would have played a part. I didn't go today, but I think it was an own goal, but they got a win, which was uh, which was great. So, season. Um, OG is banging the goals in in men's and women's football prolifically. You, you can you can find them everywhere. There you go. You? They're everywhere this weekend. So yeah, a good uh, a good victory there. But my goodness, but I haven't heard. I haven't I haven't seen. I didn't read Matt's. I think it was Matt's match report. I haven't read that yet. Or spoke to Rich. But I should imagine at Felix though the wind is usually blowing right down the pitch. So yeah, that probably had an effect on the game, no it, doubt today. Imagine that trivia question in about five years' time. What weekend did the men's and the women's team both benefit from an own goal <laughs> being scored go. in their game? <laughs> Store that one, ITFC. Yeah. If you ever want to beat David Diamond in an Ipswich quiz, which yeah. you won't, by the way, Never. but um, store store that one um, in your head. Seb, just final final thoughts from you. I'm trying to push the positivity here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we were singing we're top of the league throughout the game. We still are. It's the hardest away game we'll probably do. We've come out unscathed. We're we're one game of this three-game run down, still unbeaten. We all would have taken this. McKenna will learn from it, and we will come out better for it. <laughs> Excellent. So just put that up from Flim Flame. Gary Neville, the prophet. What a time to be alive. I think I think on that note, I will say Blue Monday live, November the 12th, after the Chelsea <laughs> game. Um, everything being released on Tuesday there. Or go and get involved in the Telegram group to get yourself ahead of the queue, just like Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby. <laughs> you can be like them, not David Beckham. Hang on a minute. That's a really bad plug. You want to be David Beckham in this um, scenario. Um, Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. Thank you to our wonderful Super Chatters, Colin and um, David there. We thank you so, so much. And there was one from Ian as well. Just a shout out out to Ian as well. There's a a third Super Chat. I think it was a five from Ian. So big thank you to him as well. Ian, I'm so, so sorry. I'm going to... Oh, I can't find it on my laptop now, can I? Um, thanks, Seb. Sorry, Ian, if I um, if I did indeed miss that one out. Um, we will see you all very soon. Um, we'll we'll see what the postponement situation is. Although everyone seems to think this Morsi thing is not happening, and the Plymouth game is happening, so we'll um, check our socials to find out what's going to happen with that. And uh, we will bid you all a fond farewell. Yeah.